Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. I hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Church Blissett. Today's episode is an exciting one, and I know I say that every time, but it is exciting for real. Uh, today we have Rick Cesari uh, on the podcast, and he is going to talk to us about video. I know that uh, a lot of my followers who follow me on Instagram, they know that I'm not afraid of the, of the camera. I'm now not afraid of the microphone, and most people would not know that I'm an extreme introvert. <laughs> and <clears throat> so I don't want you to use that as an excuse to say, I'm not going to do video or I'm not going to have video on my website or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um, I don't want you to be able to use that excuse. It's We're going to go into some more details about this, but I, I don't want to spill the beans about anything. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you, Rick. Uh, he's helped major brands from GoPro to George Foreman build million billion dollar with a b billion dollar brand response advertising and strategic video marketing uh, plus he has a really cool book that's coming out i think it's already out if i'm not mistaken is that right rick that's correct it uh, released yesterday okay so it is out uh video persuasion everything you need to know so i'm super excited about swooping up a copy of that myself and checking it out and uh Today, we're going to talk about how you're going to make those videos perform better, that you're going to do it. But before we get started, I want Rick to introduce yourself, tell us where you are and why you've been so successful at doing what you're doing, uh, and then we'll lead into some some more questions. Great. Well, first of all, Tersh, thank you for the great introduction. I really appreciate it, and also the opportunity to be on your show today. Um <laughs> Just for anybody that's listening out there that's afraid of video, I, uh, I'll try to give you the condensed version of my background, but I'm 62, so there's a lot of ground to cover. Um, I, gradu- I graduated from college. I have a degree in biology, so I don't know how that leads into marketing, <laughs> but um, I, I, uh, after college, I moved down to Daytona Beach, Florida. I went to school up in mm. Pennsylvania, and that my family was living there, and I was kind of a bum for a year. I was a bartender and a lifeguard, you know, living the high life in my early 20s, and, but I was motivated to do more with my life, and so I started reading a lot of books about motivation and how people made money, and back then and even still today, you know, real estate investing was a big thing. So I started reading books and going out and and trying to invest in real estate. And I went to this seminar and they taught me how to, uh, you know, do what they call flipping today. Back then it was called buying distressed property. And I bought a house and sold it in two weeks and made about $12,000. So oh, wow. I, yeah, I, I was so happy. I mean, that was, that was like a million dollars to me at that time. And oh, yeah. um, I was so happy. I called up a, 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 business magazine in Florida. I don't even know what's around him. It's called Florida Trend. And I said, hey, you got to do a story on this guy. It's really amazing. What he teaches really works. And they did a story. And basically that helped his seminar business start to be more successful. So he asked me if I would help him market. And just to give your listeners an idea of the time frame, this is the mid to late 80s. And we were still using newspaper ads to promote these seminars. But, um, you nice. know, I, I learned basically a lot of about selling and getting people to respond to advertising by doing that because, you know, if you didn't get people to show up to the seminars, you wouldn't make any money. And it was these early um, real estate guys that were first ones to start using television or, or infomercials. And mm. I just kind of fell into it and learned the business by doing it. And you know, made a lot of mistakes and, but had some successes along the way. And then, you know, in 1990, I started a company with my brother. I was always interested in health and we started um, a company that taught people about the benefits of drinking fresh, freshly extracted juices. And we promoted Mm. a guy named the juice man. And that was a fabulous success. We were at the right time at the right product. And, um, you know, the company just exploded and, and it grew to about 75 million in sales in, in a wow. little under four years. And we sold that business in 93 to a company in Chicago called Salton. And Salton bought us one because they wanted the brands that we had built, which was the juice man and the bread man. But they also wanted to learn how to do the type of television marketing. And so they brought me two products. One was a homemade bagel maker and the other one was this slanted grill, which at the time was a, <laughs> was, was a fajita maker. And um, it was slanted so you could cook hamburger meat into it and mm-hmm. scrape it into a shell. 
we basically that morphed into the George Foreman grill, which is a whole other story. And we did all of the infomercials for George and, um, uh, you know, help build that brand up. And, you know, one of the things in your introduction, you mentioned that, um, you know, I built several products uh, like George Foreman and I helped with OxyClean and uh, mm -hmm. more recently the GoPro camera and the billion dollar brands. But every one of those I would, I started working with, they weren't big companies when I started working with them, they were all doing hmm. um, some were startups and some were doing less than a million dollars in sales and just was able to work with them and use television direct response and with GoPro more online uh, video uh, to help build them in the brand. So that's kind of the short, short condensed version uh we could we could spend the whole hour talking <laughs> about all the different stories and brands that you mentioned earlier but um that that's how i got into the uh video marketing and you mentioned my that's book cool. just real quick is um yeah. all all of that experience of, of doing this for the last 30 years i've kind of condensed and put into the book and um you mentioned something interesting about um you know, being afraid to be in front of the camera. I even have a chapter about that, about being your own spokesperson. And we can talk about that later. So. Yeah, it's, it's, that's a good point because if you're not going to do it, nobody's going to do it. Like nobody's going to be your spokesman for you unless mm -hmm. you're paying a PR company, but uh, it's, it's really cool. So did all, all these companies that you work with, um, were they, did they start out inf infomercial or I don't, I don't recall like seeing GoPro on it. Kind of yeah, so GoPro is a and and projects that I've worked on more recently are mm -hmm. are the exception and um, uh, and they're not the exception because they've all used video to grow. We just used it in different ways, and that's something that's really important that I want to communicate to your listeners um, that are afraid of technology. And I'm the least technical person in the world. Um, and I focus on the content of the video. What, what, what do you put in there to get people to respond a certain way? And, you know, the early projects that I mentioned was, were, were direct response television infomercials. But GoPro um, basically was a combination of using 30 second spots. And normally 30 seconds isn't enough time to do a direct response spot. But one of the things we did with the GoPro spots, which I recommend that people, one little trick that they use for the videos, um, is we started every commercial, 30 second commercial out with a GoPro logo. So people knew right away what the commercial was about. How many times have you ever, um, uh, you know, listening, to, watching a TV commercial or watching a video online and you have no idea what it's about until you're like five minutes in or, or you, you flick away right. from it. So I'm a big believer in letting people know up front what the video is about. Then we used uh, user generated footage in the middle and, you know, it could be people snowboarding, scuba diving, jumping mm. off a cliff, whatever. But the end is the really important part. Uh, we added a direct response ending. We had a, an offer that said, uh, go to our website. Someone will win one of everything we make every single day. So three, wow. yeah, three great things happen. People would go to the website, they'd register for the contest and we would start building a database that we could remarket to through emails. The second thing that happened, um, people would get to the website. They'd see all the other cool GoPro videos. They'd share them with their friends and it created a viral effect. And the last thing that happened is really the direct response component. People would get to the website and they'd like, They'd buy a GoPro camera, so the advertisement was generating revenue, which we used to offset the advertising costs. So it's kind of a little microcosm of everything I try to teach people to do in that campaign for GoPro. And, um, <laughs> you know, I met the founder, Nick Woodman, at, at a trade show, the outdoor retailer show in Salt Lake City. He was selling these little cameras out of the back of a Volkswagen bus, and he was doing less than a million in sales. And in eight years, we were able to grow the business from that size to a billion dollars. And he took the company public. So, uh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, really awesome success story. So with GoPro, like when you're doing that and you're you're throwing your logo out there really fast at at the beginning, like I know I'm a really big car guy, and when GoPros first came out, it was a huge thing that like you had to have a GoPro with a suction cup, and yeah. like anytime you did anything with cars, you were you had your GoPro. Yep. Um, their logo is etched into my brain. Would you like? I, I would fear. Uh, any potential rebrand or logo changes if like if you've built that brand that way is that i mean is that a 
concern that they've ever had. I don't feel like I remember GoPro changing logos. Yeah, they, but they, they didn't. And, you know, um, one thing that Nick, the founder, was adamant about, and, you know, I didn't come up with the, with the logo, um, uh, he or his team did, and they just kind of hit it or nailed it correctly but but you know that's an important point for branding and 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 the fact is find something that you like you're comfortable with and then don't change it he was really really adamant that every little letter had to be the same size the Mm. same font and there's a reason you remember that logo is because it was the same one since day one and they kept um using it and so i'm a i'm a proponent of that is um you know finding something that you're comfortable with the name of your business, your logo. And then every time you do any type of uh, correspondence, advertising, online marketing, social media, you're imprinting that logo in people's minds and uh, they start to recall it after a while. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. So can <clears throat> before we get started, can you tell us why is video so important? Well, it's a, a, interesting. Yes, that's a great question. And, you know, we're just really becoming what I call a video first society. You know, people just don't like to read anymore. And I got a couple statistics I just want to share with you because they're, I find them pretty interesting. Um, you know, every second, almost 17,000 hours of new video will be produced. Um, uh, Forbes reported that in the last 30 days, um, there's been more video produced than all the television networks combined produced in the last 30 years. And nearly, wow. and this year they predict nearly 80% of all internet traffic will be made up of videos. Um, and so you can see that we're quickly becoming, uh, because of the way technology has developed, what I said, a video first society. But then you like layer on some of the statistics about the effectiveness of video. You know, viewers retain 95% of a message when they watch it in a video with compared to only 10% in reading it in a text. Uh, using mm. using video in an email leads to 200 to 300 percent increase in click through rates, including video on a landing page can increase conversion rates by 80 percent. And the statistics go on and on. I have a whole chapter in my book that that supports why video is so important. And if you aren't using it, you need to be using it in your business because it's really just the way that um, uh, people are used to communicating now. Yeah, I agree 100 percent, especially with uh, stuff like Instagram come out. I mean, I know Instagram had a stigma back in the day when it was first out that, uh, you know, you take a picture of your food before you eat it and that type of stuff. (laughs) But really with between the live videos of Instagram and Facebook and Mm -hmm. Snapchat and all those social media sites, um, getting on video is a lot more commonplace. And like you said, people will do video and not even listen to it it's funny because you'll like it'll be silent on there and they're just watching oh yeah watching the video and uh and and have engagement that way yeah so it sounds like you're 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 used to using instagram i haven't checked out your channel but um you know instagram facebook um we do a lot of facebook advertising now and um video has always perform better um even though sometimes people don't watch it with the audio you just have to create Mm -hmm. it and make sure you have the titles in so that people why they're watching it know you know the titles are really calling out what's happening um Mm -hmm. but um yeah so it's just you know that's what i was mentioning before about you know when i started doing video production it was very very expensive i mean a camera costs like seventy five thousand dollars and you you mm. didn't own them you had to rent them and hire a video crew and it might cost you five to ten thousand dollars to do a video shoot for a day and then you had the editing part of it and now technology has evolved to where we carry more powerful cameras in our phones than we used <laughs> to use back then. You know, they're, they're high definition, um, 4d cameras and really great things. And I talk about how to utilize that technology, uh, so that you can use it to start making your own videos that you can post on social media or, or on your website. Yeah, that's really cool. So are there, there's ways to make, those videos work better or is it, I mean, yeah, or is and, it like, is there a structure to set up to that? Yeah, there's a, there's, I, I really go into my book and, and, and I think it's chapter five and like four 
are five different structures that are really great for engaging um, people. But let me give you the simplest structure, and I'm sure you've heard this before. I read a book when I was in my 20s. Uh, called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale mm-hmm. Carnegie. And mm-hmm. uh, I actually took a course from, not from him personally, I, I think he was passed away, but an instructor, and it was about speaking. And Dale gave a uh, a formula for giving a speech, which is tell them what you're going to say, say it, and then tell them what you said. And I've used that simple formula over and over again in my videos, even successful infomercials like the George Foreman Grill or Sonicare Toothbrush or Rug Doctor, um, it, it, though it might not appear that's happening, that's what's really happening. And I go and I go into a lot of depth, really comparing good video production and producing good videos is very similar to preparing a PowerPoint presentation or a speech that you have to give in front of a group or from a stage. And you have to be able to hook the listener or hook the viewer into it. And then you present the main information and then you do a summary at the end. And if you study anything about um, giving speeches or creating PowerPoint presentations, it's really a lot of the same concepts to promoting or creating really great effective videos. That's really cool. I, I like that. It's instead of going on and rambling because I, me personally, whenever a video starts getting rambly, that's when I'm like exit, yep. <laughs> exit stage, right. Absolutely. I'm done. You know, yep. <laughs> if you have that structure set up, then it's precise to the point and people appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. well, it, it definitely. It goes, it goes back again to the, what we did with GoPro. You, you said exit stage, right? Well, right away when someone's watching a GoPro video or any other video that I'll make for somebody, you know, right away what it's about. Um, and then you have two choices at that point. You, no one's ever going to make a video that every single person is interested in. So the people mm-hmm. that are interested in what you're talking about are going to stay engaged to see what you're going to promise them or what kind of content you're going to deliver. And the ones that tune out aren't going to be your potential customers anyway. But that brings us to a good point. And, and it's kind of like, you know, how do you start a video to hook people in? Um, yeah. And again, I go back to... I I go over about a half a dozen ways in my book, but three simple ways. Um, You can always start a video with a question like, would you like to lose 10 pounds? How would you like to have more energy? Um, Do you, do you get good sleep at night? And so again, you're kind of throwing out a question or a problem that many, many people will have. And, if they, they're hoping then that, that what follows up is the answer to that question, or you're going to deliver mm-hmm. some kind of content that is going to enable them to, you know, solve that problem. So that's always a good way of starting a video. Um, another way is to start it with a factoid. And I'll give you a, an example. I talked to you about the, when we made the infomercial for the juice man, um, I had seen a story on CNN and the story said that the scientists had just, um, uh, discovered an element in broccoli that was shown to prevent breast cancer. So I started that video out with what's called a factoid. So it's some mm. some fact or something that's pretty revolutionary or, or new or, or whatever. And that one had just come out. And I started that half hour infomercial with that factoid. And then anybody that was interested in the power of vegetables or, or preventing disease you know, was drawn in to listen what came next. And um, so mm-hmm. that's another good way of doing it. And the last is one you've probably heard about before, and it's it's good old storytelling and starting um, a video out with, mm, a, yep. with a story. And uh, just because that's people love to listen to stories. And just like I told sure. you the story about GoPro earlier, that's, that's how, you know, you can start that out, start a video out um, with a story like that. And again, that'll hook people in. Absolutely. So, um, hook people. what did you say the second part? Oh, I was? didn't. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. So, <laughs> I thought you did. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, when you talk about making effective videos, I think the, the, um, first thing you have to do, I have a saying that I like to say is, is that is start with the end in mind. And that is mm, what yeah. is it you're trying to get the person to do when they watch that video, you know, and, and I just want, your listeners to know that 
we're not talking about um, entertaining videos from the standpoint of like family vacations or that type of thing. I'm talking about videos as a business tool. And so you have to think like, what, what, what are you trying to do with that video? And once you know what you want to do, then you, that um, helps you construct the video and helps you, you know, do an introduction. Um, so the other thing is you have to really figure out who the video is targeted for. And, you know, everybody has a target demographic. Um, you, you know, you might not know what that is, but you have to do a little research or, or talk to your customers, find out um, what, what, you know, who, who are the person you're trying to reach? And then you mm -hmm. basically um, put the content in the video that will cater to that. And we'll talk a little bit about that in more detail. Um, one of the other things I like to use, and I, I, I use it in almost every video in some form or not, and that's kind of authentic testimonials. And I think that they're mm. really the most powerful marketing tool you can get. And, um, you know, if your listeners, some of your listeners or many of your listeners have their own businesses, first thing I would urge them to do, and I do this with companies I consult with all the time, is let's go out and talk to 10 or 15 or 20 of your customers and interview them. And I'll just happen to have a video camera there and we'll video the tape them. And, but two things are happening when I do that. First of all, when I'm talking to people, I'll ask them, you know, what do you like about the product or service? What do you don't like? how do you hear about it? Um, what would you do to improve it? Um, and and I'll ask a, a list of 20 questions that are pretty much very similar, no matter what the product or service. And I have those in my book. And by the end of that time, it's it's the best focus group you can have because these people have actually purchased your product. They're customers of yours. And you'd be shocked, mm -hmm. um, Tersh, how few people actually talk to their customers on a regular basis, and yet they're the best source mm -hmm. of information. And I just take it a step further, and I'm recording these um, testimonials. So now I have um, uh, great sound bites. Like, you, you never know... Um, when yeah. you're going to get a nugget of gold from somebody and you can never, I've never met a copywriter that could write lines as good as people come up with just off the cuff and people realize that it's really authentic when they hear it. And that's what I use in my marketing. And I deploy those testimonials um, on, on the website and, and in emails and, and even use them in Facebook ads and things like that. So it's a really, really powerful thing to do. And I guess the last part of a, um, you know, business focused video, and this seems like common sense, but again, many people don't do it, is not to forget the CTA or call to action. You know, people watch a video, they get excited about your business or service, and then you don't tell them what to do. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, go to my website to get more information, go, you know, put the product in the cart, um, push the buy button on Amazon. Um, it doesn't, have to be a purchase thing, but it's always important to tell the viewer the next step that you want them to take. And again, it's an area that I see a lot of people when they're making videos don't do. So on that topic there, so I'll sure. start at the end and sure. work my way backwards. <laughs> uh, the call to action. What are your thoughts on something like like what Gary V? Are yes. you familiar yep. with Gary yep. Vaynerchuk? So like the jab, jab, right hook, like give, give, mm -hmm. give then ask, uh, would you still add the call to action to every, every video if that's your well, intention? Well, I guess or... it, 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 you know, and again, every circumstance is different. So he's coming mm -hmm. from a place of more social media marketing and social media yeah. is really about, to me, delivering great content and you're delivering content, sure. you're delivering content. And then you're going to ask for some type of sale or order after you've built that trust. And that's why, you know, not every video has to be quote unquote, like an infomercial or an online infomercial type of thing. Yeah. Um, and again, it's, it, that's where it goes back to really understanding, you know, the end in mind, what are you trying to do? Are we going to provide right now? So I'll give you, a, I'll give you the best way to answer that question because there, again, there's not one size fits all, but, the three 
most engaging types of online video content are first, number one, tutorials. And tutorials are basically how-to videos. So if you have a website and you're selling a product or a service, you should have some type of tutorial video that teaches people how to use the product. Uh, the second most type of online uh, uh, engaging online content is a demonstration video. And demonstration video falls more in line with what we were just talking about, about introducing your product. Um, when you're describing it, you're focusing on the benefits. You, you mentioned the features, but you definitely call out the benefits to the end user. And that's the one that would normally have a call to action because you're, you're, you're demonstrating the product. You want people to to, to buy it or learn more. And that, that would be the one with the call to action. And the third type of video I already talked about, which is testimonials. And, you know, and for your listeners today, Tersh, if they go to my website, which is rickcesari.com, they can download um, uh, an ebook that's basically the three, the, what I just talked about, the three most popular types of online video content and how you can deploy them in your business to get a good, good return. That's cool. It's really funny because like every time we, we talk about one thing, we it kind of uh, rabbit hole yeah. and, and it's all like, I'm just taking notes as fast as I can write it down. I don't even know if I'll be able to read it after the fact, but uh, it's just all this content is really cool. And um, so whenever you were reviewing things with your clients, that's kind of, I feel like that's an awkward thing for a lot of people to do. And that's probably why they, don't do it. And then also like in our minds, we're all perfect. And then when mm -hmm. you actually go review somebody and you ask them like, Hey, you know, tell me about this experience. And they're like, Oh, by the way, your guy left all this trash everywhere. And it's stuff you need to hear. But in your yes. mind, if, before you asked, everything was hunky dory. And, now oh, yeah. you've asked and, that, and that's why, you know, it's really <laughs> beneficial to talk to your clients or, or your customers because they'll tell you the truth and, and mm. you need to hear it because, um, I feel like business is a constant, um, you know, feedback loop. Um, you do, you do something, you put it out in the marketplace, it starts to work. You get feedback from, uh, your customers, your clients, you improve it, then you do it a little bit better. And, um, it just keeps evolving until it's, a the, gets better and better and better. Yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. It's just, uh, getting rid of our egos and, yes. and getting, and just do it, just get out there and do it. And then like, I look back at some of my first videos and my first podcast episodes and it's like, Oh, that was horrible. And it just, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah. It's like anything else. And, and people don't realize that or don't think it in that terms. I, really probably three months ago, just started doing Facebook lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm usually the guy behind the camera. I'm not like mm -hmm. a, I'm not like a, 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 you know, I don't operate the camera, but I look at what's happening and, and like, make sure that we're getting the right content. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm, I'm not usually in front of the camera and Facebook live. You're, you know, once you push that button, you're start <laughs> talking <laughs> and I'll tell you what the first, um, like you said, the first half a dozen I did were not very good, but <laughs> no, it's really like anything else. Like, uh, nobody is like a born, a great athlete necessarily or, right. or a great musician. You know, it takes a lot of practice. And, um, the thing is, there's a lot of really, 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 really bad video online and you yeah. don't have to worry and everyone starts somewhere. And I think people are, are very forgiving um, as long as things are authentic and authentic means that you're doing your best. People can see that and, you know, gradually things will get better. Absolutely. That's like whenever people ask me about podcasting and how to get started and all that, it's like, mm -hmm don't compare your first episode to my 418th episode. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and like, yeah, this is amazing. You're going to listen to the best sound. No, I'm, I'm going to toot my horn. Uh, it's like, I've had tons and tons of practice. Like every hour that I've, I recorded this, I've spent two hours editing. And then like, so now things are second nature to me. And, um, when I say the intro, like it, it's, it rolls right off my tongue because I've said it 418 times, times 12 probably. Yep. Uh, so don't compare your video, your first shaky hand video, you know, 
if you if you want to get prepared, get you a pro, a, tri, a small tripod. They're like five dollars on Amazon. Get you a lav mic that hooks up to your cell phone and take you a selfie video. And like, but don't compare yourself to someone who has you know a red camera and like this full on gimbal and they're you know out there riding behind a snowboarder. Like you, you can't if you do that, you're always going to set yourself up for failure. Oh yeah. And you know, you hit the nail on the head. Um, I spend, um, a little, a chapter in the book talking about video production, um, because that's an area that people think like, well, I want to get into video, but I don't know how to do it. And like I said earlier, technology has made things so much easier for us that, you know, there's uh, apps online, uh, you, you know, I, I, I name like 10 of them, but one of them's like Content Samurai, where you can basically plug in a written page, a blog, and it'll be create a video for you. And you can read in a what? voiceover. Yeah, no, honestly, go go look them up. You can do a free trial called Content Samurai. Um, and it's and but there's that's that's one of many apps. I list like 10 of them like that, that do all the video work uh, for you. But I want to get back to what you said you know, people are using their cell phones to make video, which is great. The The lenses are great. The cameras are great. But the two areas that people fall down on, and you mentioned one of them, is audio. And you can go to Amazon, like you said, and buy a little tripod, and you can get a, a, a nice mic. And um, the, the last mm-hmm. thing is like a little light. Yep. They sell these little ring lights that you that even come with stands. And if you have those three things, all of, you can get all three of them for less than $100. All of a sudden, your videos will look yep. like 100% better than if you didn't weren't using those things. So again, technology has made it really, really easy for anyone. Absolutely. To I, sometimes a video. <clears throat> I'm going back to Instagram again, but sometimes we'll, I'll watch an Instagram video and I'm like, man, that is like super clear. It's like almost looks 4k and like what camera are you using? I'll ask whoever's doing the little live video or the, the, the story. And they're like, Oh, that's my iPhone XR. I just put the ring light around it. And I have my live mic hooked up to the yeah. bottom of it. And it's like, wow. Yeah, I got a little ring light sitting on my desk right here. And and they have a place to hold. They have a mount to hold your your mm-hmm. your phone. And then, like I said, you know this part better than me, the, the microphone or audio part. Um, and if you do those three things and just improve lighting a little bit and improve the audio, um, your videos will be much more watchable. Yeah, I love it. That's 100% I agree. Um so I've jumped around in so many different rabbit holes. I don't even know where we were. <laughs> I know. But let me just tell a quick story then. Um, <laughs> go ahead. I started go ahead. out. Um, well, let me just t- tell. Uh, this will just be really quick. So I was telling you about the George Foreman grill when we first um, uh, got that product. It was called the Fajita Express, and they weren't selling any of them. And um, George, I think that I actually have one. I, I and I think my dad do. still has it. They made they they've sold a hundred million units, so a lot of people okay. have them. Okay, <laughs> <All right. laughs> and um, one of the most successful products all time. But um, anyway, they um, basically Georgia just won the heavyweight championship for the second time. He was forty six years old. He was the oldest ever to do it, um, and he was looking for a product to endorse, and somehow we got connected with them and uh, I was working with the company out of Chicago called Sultan at the time. And we basically took that fajita express and turned it into uh, the lean, mean fat reducing grilling machine. It's, it's a, you know, talk about repositioning of a product and um, basically the slanted and uh, basically what became a way of draining grease and fat away from the food. So anyway, the, that whole campaign was a huge success. Everyone's heard of the George Foreman grill. And so about four months ago, I got a call out of the blue from George Foreman's agent and I hadn't worked with George in 15 years. And, um, they said, Hey, George is looking to, um, license another product and they need help with their TV. Would you be interested? So I jumped at the chance. I said, of course. And, um, there's a company, uh, called real time pain relief that makes, uh, pain relief products for athletes. They hold a lot of, uh, licenses with professional teams and, you know, major league baseball and, uh, NFL and things like that. Anyway, they hired George to be the spokesperson and about, 
three weeks ago now, we were down in LA and we filmed a commercial with him uh, promoting this product. So you'll see that on TV probably in the next uh, month or so coming up. And it was good. He, he hasn't in 15 years, the guy hasn't changed at all. He's just, you know, he's an authentic person that what you see is what you get. And I think that's what his appeal is to people. That's really cool. Yeah. I have a really good friend of mine. <clears throat> Jeez, excuse me. Uh, a really good friend of mine, Mike McCallowitz. And he, when you talk to him or you listen to him on a podcast or anywhere, you're like, oh, that's got to be a stage. You're, you're, you're acting like that. No, he's literally exactly like that. And that's why he's so many people's best friends. But that, that Fajita Express, the before it was the George Foreman, I'm almost positive that my dad still has an old fajita express. Right, uh, like, that would be interesting. That would be, uh, let me know if he does. That would be a collector. I will, uh, I will check it out and let you know. Cause I remember that thing growing up in high school and middle school. I remember seeing that thing and my dad messed with that thing all the time. And then he got him a George Foreman to upgrade to that. And I was like, Oh man, dad, you're going to go crazy with this thing. So your avatar, that's the number two, uh, creating your avatar, your, your perfect person that you're going to, your content's aimed towards. Um, that's something that you need to do in general anyways, because when you're marketing to your, to your client, you can't just sling everything against the wall and see what sticks. You really need to know who you're targeting. Um, uh, you want to touch on that just a little bit? Uh, yeah. And, and that's you know. really become much more important with the online advertising platforms um, and actually gives us the ability to target people um, much better than we ever could before. The things about um, the old uh, television infomercial days, I used to tell people that was a shotgun blast. Um, Basically, you were trying to buy, when we bought Media Time, we were trying to buy as many viewers for the cheapest amount of money as possible and put the advertisement out in front of them and see if we could get the the right return. You know, could we get $2 for every dollar we spent on media? And, you know, with the online platforms now, um, it's become much more about targeting, but you can't target if you don't understand who your customer is. And I go back to, um, one, if you have a mailing list, that will tell you who your customer is. You can you can do matching, you know, audience matches on Facebook. Um, and, you know, again, it goes back to what we talked about earlier, going out and talking to your customer or your client, and you'll get a really good understanding of who they are just by the nature of the people that, that, that show up. Um, you know, I, I know it sounds simplistic, but it's something like if I go in to consult with a business, that's still what I do today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So will this, will this process work if somebody's doing uh, television advertising, like um, commercials uh, on TV? I'll, I'll admit I, uh, we actually took televisions out of our house about six years ago. So when it comes to TV, I don't know if infomercials are still even a thing. Honestly, we do a lot of social media, but uh television we don't do so i can't i can't really relate that so so television it, it, what's happened is the the in a marketing hierarchy um the place for television has really flip flopped from online it used to be you could launch a product on television and create a success and it, it, it was a lot more expensive than launching something online, but it was still doable. Now I feel like um, you absolutely 100% have to launch a product through social media and online and through your website. And then as you start to get traction and you have built that foundation, TV is still very effective to like taking you to the next level. And if you think about it, you don't watch TV, you don't have TVs in your house, but there's a huge amount of online companies that are advertising on TV. And, I can imagine. and yeah, and basically it's a way of um, another source of driving traffic to their websites, especially a lot of um, direct to consumer uh, product companies. You know, they're selling mattresses or, um, you know, just ancestry. Dot com, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Just, I mean, any type, um, you, you know, personal relationships, match doc, whatever. Um, but a lot of direct to consumer mm-hmm. product or service companies, they'll they'll layer in TV now as like a, a second phase, and that's how we use it with our clients as well. Gotcha. That that we have to build up our online um, marketing first. Once that foundation is in place, you can run TV, and then because a lot of times people are basically see something on TV and they'll go do two things. They'll go Google it or they'll go right Mm. to Amazon. And so Mm. you almost have to have like, we like to say there's like three legs to the stool. Um, You know, Amazon is one of them. If you have a, 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 a hard, you know, a, a consumer product, um, your website, and then your other advertising, um, which, it, which if you have those three things in place, you can build a pretty good business. So with that being said, it sounds like that's pretty much the structure I believe that a small service business would do too. like Absolutely. start online as you grow your online audience, uh, then you would venture out into television and, and radio versus yes trying to start with that huge budget in mind. Well, the problem now too, is that because online's become so prevalent, if you spend money on TV and you don't have a good online presence, you end up wasting a lot of your money. Cause again, mm. people will see it on TV and then they'll go check you out online. And so that's why the other reason why you got to build up your, your website and your social media uh, get that foundation and then TV can still be a powerful way to uh, drive traffic and sales. So I got a question about GoPro and sure. when you, when they sent their, the viewing audience at the end of the video, it said, go to, you had your direct response and it said to go to the website and you watched other videos. How long did it take to create that content? Because I'm thinking to myself, like, if I put on an ad, like a Facebook ad at the end of it, it said, you know, go watch more videos on our website. I would have to have more videos on the website. So yes. like- yeah. And, and GoPro is an anomaly only because they were people, they generated so much user generated oh, right. content that yeah. um, they didn't have to pay for their content. Like every other normal business has to do. I so- remember when we were, when we would, we would record and it's like, maybe they'll put it on their site. And like, now I'm like, please send me a video. Like, oh, yeah. like I'm begging you to do stuff. I pay you to do it. And we were begging GoPro to put our stuff on their site. Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's one of the reasons they were able to get such cool uh, video is they had people competing. I mean, it almost became, um, people were competing to see who could create the coolest video. And so they were doing all the production costs and sending it in the GoPro and the yep. people at GoPro had to sit there and just say, Hmm, which video do we like best? And then, and, yeah. they, and, and really there wasn't a lot of cost to them that would have been if they had to go out and produce all that stuff themselves. And that's a great point. So with that being said though, how many videos do you think that we should have on our website? Like as yeah, a so small business and, a and, and we're doing less than a million or something like that. Yeah, no, I understand that. That's a great question. And I, so people ask me, how do we use video on a, on a website? So I feel like the one single most important video is the one that when you first go to the website, I want to see a video that tells me what your business is, what is it that you do? Why are you different than the competition and what's the benefit to me? And that's kind of an overview or a highlight video or your, or, you know, your origin story, but it's really a 90 second to two minute video that really tells everybody what they need to know about you or your business. And that gives people a really good, um, thing that they can learn they they see right away so that that would be the first thing i would deploy the second thing now would you I, would you really ahead. quick would you put that above the fold or I would, on absolutely. the home page I, okay. I would put it above the fold you know a lot of times you'll kind of have a headline and and mm-hmm. stuff off to the left and then a little video window on the right and again that's just a really simple way for people to get a lot of great information about you or your business very quickly and then um, the second, to me, the second most important types of videos, what we talked about already, I uh, would would create, if you don't have them, some testimonial videos. And again, go out and talk to your customers, um, record that video, and those can go, you know, below the fold, they can go 
uh, in a different section that you click to a different page on your website. Um, but that that's uh, to me the second most important thing. Um, and then the third then is when I would start looking at a tutorial video or demonstration video um, for your for each of your product or services. And I'm writing down like furious. Well, you can don't have to write all that. It's all in my book. <laughs> you can, you can go to Amazon and get video persuasion. And you know, one of the great things, it's not just my information. One thing I did um, uh, at the end of every chapter, I interview quote unquote, an expert that's using video to successfully grow their business. And somebody, you know, there's a story about somebody that developed these earphones for kid called cozy phones and he, and how he used a video on Facebook ads to grow his business. I have another guy who's like an e-commerce. He's been in e-commerce forever. Um, he does, he has a website called ladders.com. Um, mm. he did the little giant ladder, um, online business, and he also does a lot of fitness products and he's a big, and he, we interview him and he's a big advocate of tutorial videos because it cuts down on his customer service calls. If you really explain, yeah. explain the product. So there's really great interviews at the end of every chapter with people that are implementing videos in their business and how they're doing it right now in the marketplace. All right. Well, that's what I'm doing as soon as I finish recording here. So <laughs> I hope some of your listeners do too. <laughs> Absolutely. If you're listening to this and you're driving, I will add a link in the show notes. So don't wreck by yeah, exactly. getting on Amazon while driving. Yes. But uh, yes, order the book. That's really cool. I'm not going to ask anything else. I could go on for hours. I'm just going to well, say. Well, this is fun. I really enjoyed, you know, your great I at asking I appreciate questions. It. So, <laughs> so uh, if people want to get in touch with you more, what's the best way for that to happen? The best way is really go to my website, which is rickcesari.com. It's R-I-C-K-C-E-S-A-R-I, rickcesari.com, and, and download that free information. I'll have your mailing address, and then I'll, I'll be corresponding and sending you great free information like Gary V says to do, but it really the kind of things <laughs> we're talking about today. But also, I write a weekly blog that's really, really mm. informative, and I know that I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth because I talk about video, um, but I like to write as well and really great information in the blogs. But I also have a YouTube channel, uh, which is this almost the same thing, which is rickcesari.tv, and Everything I, I have on there, um, how do you create a good demo video? How do you create a powerful opening? How do you hook the viewer? And so I have videos that explain all these things um, where it's me just kind of um, talking into the camera, but then showing examples from successful commercials I've made in the past. Awesome. Yep. So you're you're about to get a follow from uh, Icebound. That would be me. That's our AC okay. company. So cool. on YouTube, you're going to get a follow here instantly. So I can start watching those videos too. Cool, man. I appreciate it uh, from the bottom of my heart. Like all this information, it's stuff that you took the time uh, to share with our audience and tons of business owners who coming into this conversation probably were just like me and had no idea about things like content samurai or anything like that and getting your book. So I, I really appreciate you coming on the, on the show and sharing with us. Hey, it's been my pleasure. And I, you know, thank you for having me on. And like I said, I've really enjoyed uh, speaking with you. You're easy to have a conversation with, but like you said, it's, it's your 400th time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Plus some, because I have two other podcasts. Oh, too, I didn't so. know that. Wow. Yeah. yeah they're just busy. local. Well, they're a local podcast for local business owners, okay. so I can yep. introduce myself and meet other business owners, which if anybody's listening, you should do that. If you're in um, an area yes. and you want to get to know more business owners, create a podcast and interview other business owners. Ours is called uh, Shop Small SAV, so Shop Small for Savannah, and it's interviewing other business owners and all you're doing is creating that relationship. And then when, when the referrals need to happen. That, there they are right there. Yeah, so. pod, podcasting is just uh, growing exponentially. I went to PodFest really last is. year down in Orlando. I don't know if you've oh, cool. like a thing for podcasters. And it was oh, yeah. amazing the different content that was there. And the technology that's coming out yes. around podcasting is crazy. Yes, you know? it is. Yes, it is. They're making it easier and easier to do. I mean, you can do it from your phone if you use something like Anchor. 
and just record your episode. Yep. Technology is making it easier to reach people all the time. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. So thank you again for coming on the show. You're welcome. And thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast, the Service Business Mastery Podcast, that is. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, uh, obviously we'll put it all of uh, Rick's content and how to reach out to him in the show notes. Uh, but you can feel free to reach out to me, Tersh, at icebound.us. Uh, if you're wondering how we cram, my wife and our family, we cram four kids and us and her being in the military and a nurse and she helps with Icebound and we have three podcasts and she's a uh, health coach how we cram all that in together uh, in one week Um, one of the ways that we do that is by automating our day so we automate everything throughout our day one of those things is an autoresponder in an email so that we can set up and limit your expectations so whenever somebody sends an email to me i will always uh, send an autoresponder to let you know i will respond to you today but i only check my emails twice a day so if it's an immediate you need immediate response please call the office Uh, and that's just one of those things where like every time my phone chimes i don't have to pick it up so it just mentally i can just focus on other things like recording this podcast so if you want to check that out feel free to uh, email me and just say a testing autoresponder and that's tersh t-e-r-s-h at icebound.us and uh if i don't talk to you before next week i'll talk to you then also if you found value in this episode please share it with your friends and uh, take a screenshot of it and share it on social media if you have if you have instagram share it in your instagram stories tag me uh, and i'll we'll, i'll follow you back we can follow each other we can be social media friends uh, but anyways until next time thank you again for listening to the service business mastery podcast the podcast focused on service business owners managers and technicians who are considering becoming business owners themselves we'll talk again soon mm-hmm.